It's certainly overdue, but yes, it is time to talk about the women of this game. Yo, what's going on, my people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I do hope you are doing well, my friend. I really do hope that it's time to talk about Chelsea women and indeed the women's game. A lot of you have been asking me to do this for a long, long time on multiple platforms. It is well overdue and for that I apologise. But what prompted me deserves a shout out. Eunice did a video on it yesterday on his channel. Go check it out. It made me think I need to talk about this as well because Chelsea women are absolutely incredible. I watched that second leg against Bayern Munich in the Champions League semi-final. Scintillating. I, haven't, I, mean, I can't remember that much I shouted in a game this season. It was an incredible finish to the game, an incredible team with an incredible manager got to the Champions League final and I want to talk a little bit what's happening to the women's game right now. So settle in, get comfortable, drop a like and subscribe only if you want to but hey if you do choose to subscribe hit the bell notifications icon as we get into today's video. Right so Chelsea dismantled Bayern Munich en route to the Champions League final. They'd previously beaten Wolfsburg which were the, one of the biggest teams in women's football. Uh, them and Lyon are were sort of dominating the competition. I certainly, when I used to watch a little bit more women's football, Lyon was winning all the time. And Chelsea had built a great team, but they haven't quite done it yet. They, you know, they want to get there. They want that sort of Champions League glory. And they dispatched Bayern Munich in fine style. After losing the first leg away in Germany 2-1, they got the away goal, but it's a sort of delicate score. They went on to win the second leg 4-1, leaving it 5-3 on aggregate. But it wasn't that easy. Chelsea took the lead on aggregate in this game 3-1. After goals from Super Fran Kirby, Ji Sun Yun, and Panilla Harda. But for the final few minutes, like the final five minutes in the game, should Bayern Munich equalise to make it 3-2 on the night, 4-4 on aggregate. Chelsea would have been out on the away goals rule. So it was so intense. Our goal mouth was being battered. It was terrifying until we get the breakaway when their keeper's up. We break down the other end and that woman, Fran Kirby, scores into an open net to make it 4-1 on the night and Chelsea achieve Champions League glory. And they're set to face Barcelona in the final. Now, it's not just the final of the Champions League they're in. Chelsea are on for another league title domestically in the Women's Super League. Check it out, they currently lie in second place behind Manchester City, but they have a game in hand and should they win that, they will be clear of Man City at the top of the table to win yet another league title. Total domination domestically, certainly lately, from Roman Abramovich's Emma Hayes's Super Blues. Now I say Roman Abramovich because it's really important in this. He has put in a lot of money to both the academy and indeed the women's game. If you look at, for example, for comparison, Liverpool, they've invested so much into their training ground and the first team, but they do nothing for the women's team. So it deserves, this is another reason that Roman Abramovich deserves a great deal of credit for what he's done for Chelsea as a club, the community around it, and indeed women's football generally. The women's game also has a massive new TV deal which I'm going to read you about in just a moment to sort of demonstrate how this game is developing, but let's just talk about the team a little bit more. Chelsea have the best manager in the women's game, hands down, and that is Emma Hayes. She is Freaking wonderful, I love her. If you listen to her talk, she's one of the most realist people ever, she's super cool massively astute when it comes to tactics and indeed just general coaching she's incredible i think they were desperate to give her the england job and she's been spoken of as if there was a woman ever to get into the men's game as a coach she'd be top of top of the list now of course there's loads of men coaching women in the women's game but it would seem unheard of for a woman to come and coach men but it shouldn't be sure there would be a cultural thing to break down men understand how to be around men in certain cultures and instances and I, you know, concede to that. I'm not saying it would be an easy thing to do culturally and in society to drop a woman in to coach a men's team. I understand there'll be inherently 
natural barriers. If there was one woman that could just stamp her authority and make it work, it would be Emma Hayes. She's been linked, well, not to a club, but talked about if there ever was a woman to come and coach the men, she has the capacity to be that pioneer, an amazing coach who is compassionate with players, but you know, it just absolutely exudes authority. So I had to talk about Emma Hayes. She's incredible. We're so, so lucky to have her. She's absolutely, for me, absolutely clear the best in the game. And let's talk about the players as well, because you could make a very, very good case for Chelsea having the best players in the world. Let's talk about their attackers. So Chelsea bought Sam Kerr a couple of seasons ago, and she had a difficult time getting into her scoring flow, I suppose, at Chelsea. But once she got going, she's incredible, doing front flip celebrations. She was um, bought from, I believe, She's Australian, I think she was bought from the Australian League, excuse me if that's wrong, but she was seen as maybe the best player in the world, Sam Kerr, this sort of absolute gunman up front or gunwoman up front, incredible, really, really sort of dominant and assertive. We brought her to Chelsea, and we probably didn't really need her that much because we had good forwards, but we did it anyway. And after a while, she's exploded onto the scene with an absolutely incredible relationship with strike partner slash our number 10, Fran Kirby. Now, Fran Kirby has won the PFA Player of the Year and she could be on for the Ballon d'Or this season. Incredible, tricky, playing behind strikers. She's like our Eden Hazard. <laughs> I used to say that when Eden Hazard was playing for Chelsea. Incredibly technical, can move between the lines really well, very good eye for an assist and can score a goal herself. Like I said, she's on for a Ballon d'Or, she's won PFA Players of the Year. She's incredible, she's a Chelsea player. And on top of that, Chelsea bought Penilla Harder just recently off Wolfsburg, one of the recent teams we dispatched in Europe. She is now recognised as probably the best player in the world. You could say Kerr and Penilla Harder are almost like Messi and Ronaldo of the women's game, but they both play for Chelsea. <laughs> Penilla Harder is incredible. She scored in the semi-final as well. Absolutely another assertive goal threat. Just superb. You know, can score headers, long-range goals, just technical short-range goals. Incredible. And on top of that, while we're going through the attack, we have Beth England, who often can't get a sniff. She's our striker, English by the way, Beth England, and she was our top goal scorer last season. And she finds it difficult to get into the team. And she's the top goal scorer and like, you know, very, very good. So Chelsea are riddled with talent, top to bottom. We've got multiple amazing goalkeepers. Berg is incredible. I'm not gonna go through the entire squad. I just wanted to give you an idea of the quality that Chelsea have in this women's team. And it's a lot. Best manager in the world, probably best squad in the world well invested by the owner and on for multiple trophy glory this season but i want to talk about the women's game more because a lot of you watching this will watch it but a lot of you won't and i want to talk to you a little bit more why perhaps you should and what's happening so like many of you i didn't watch much women's football i knew chelsea had a you know women's team were very good but i wasn't massively into it maybe because of like prejudice thinking are oh, they're not as fast or you know that they, they're you can even go into biology and talk about how their hips are shaped and how it's difficult to wear football boots and they need to change the technology but they're incredible they're still like human beings full-size human beings that play a game and they can be just as technically good as the men and they're capable of putting on performances that make you get out of your seat that game like seven again i'll go back to that semi-final i was just biting my nails down i was screaming i haven't done that for the men's game this season you know i've been on edge but champions league semi-final all on the line, dramatic ending like that. It was incredible. Anyway, I wasn't watching much women's football generally a couple of years ago. Maybe international. I think, was it 2018, just after the men's game, there was uh, the Women's World Cup, I believe. And a lot of people tuned into that. A lot. It was exciting. Obviously, USA won, but, you know, people the France are very good. I think they got to the final. Uh, England got to the semi. I believe it was the semi-final. And uh, we just got knocked out by the USA, which are the best, you know, women's team in the world they kept winning everything in america soccer is very much a game for the women up there so they, there's a lot of focus into that and in its development but everyone was tuning into the women's world cup and they were thinking oh that was enjoyable can't wait till that comes around again but since then there's been a sort of underlying bubbling under the surface of interest and excitement for the women's game and recently there was a new tv deal that was signed that will throw a lot of money into the game and help its development let me cite you just the beginning of this article from on Football 365 to give you some context. The FA have announced it has signed a quote landmark end quote multi-million pound deal 
with Sky Sports and the BBC for the broadcast rights to the Women's Super League. The agreement, which will run for three years from the beginning of next season, is believed to be worth £8 million per year. Some of the money will be used in central investments, which will include support and development of refereeing, while the rest will be split among clubs, with the WSL receiving 75%, the Championship receiving a 25% share, and some of the money will be merit-based. Clearly, £8 million is just 20% of Joe Linton, so it's hardly generous by the lucrative standards of the men's football. But even so, it's the biggest broadcast deal for any professional women's league in the world, and it's very exciting. True, it's not loads and loads of money, and if you just think about it from an economics per, you know, point of view, of course it's going to be nowhere near the men's game. That's just how things are at the moment. But it's important, and it's a start, and it's exciting. You'll start learning about more players in the WSL, who's good, who's got rivalries of other players, big transfers, exciting things. It won't just be like, oh, Chelsea have signed Penilla Hada. Oh, apparently she's the best player in the world. That's interesting. It will be like, you know, epic build up. You'll, you know, you'll follow the men's game, you'll follow the women's game. You'll learn about how they play slightly differently. But it'll still be really, really exciting. Look, I'm going to be honest, I follow the men's game, I always have much closer, and I imagine I will for certainly a long time, but I want to you know, share to you guys that the women's game is very exciting as well. I don't catch every single game, I'm not going to be dishonest with you guys, I'm going to say, oh, I watch every game and know every member of the squad, I could probably know most of the squad, but my level of interest is growing and I wanted to share that with you guys here on the channel because it's an important part of the game. And you know, women, if, you, if they want to become professional footballers, why not have their ambition, you know, to the stars where the men's play as well, you know, to the level of men's play as well, if I'm speaking English correctly. Anyway, I'm going to end the video there. You know, check out the highlights to that semi-final. It was incredible. Enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'm going to get it how I'm living. I'm going to walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me baby